Hi, my name is Barry Poppleton and this video is about the four rooms of change model, which is one model of change. There are many models of change, um, but I, I found this one particularly useful because it gives you um, an insight into how the transitions work so well and how you might be able to shift people from one place to another. <clears throat> So he's called it the four rooms of change, much like a house of change, if you like, which has four rooms in it. And people move through these four rooms as they go through different stages of change. And it's not designed to be a linear model. So it, this isn't exactly the steps that people will go through, but generally it's a useful guide as many people do go through those steps. Um, and <clears throat> sitting behind it are in fact two transitions to change. The first one is past to future. And so on the left hand side of the model, you will see these two rooms here that refer to the past. Um, and the rooms on the right hand side refer to a more of a future state. So they speak to what's happening now. And then as um, and, and we think about the systems and the processes and the relationships that exist now that we value and therefore react to when the change is announced. Um, and then the shift in the future is about looking at, well, what's possible by way of new relationships, new opportunities, new systems that might support us. So that's the one transition. The other one is the cognitive to the emotional. So you've got the top two rooms that are a response to change, which are very much you know, around the analytical and rational. Um, and then these rooms here at the bottom, which refer to the emotional. Now, <clears throat> the thinking there is based on the fact that emotion trumps logic. So, you know, if we and hear something that we are not ready for or um, have some concerns or anxieties around, the reaction is not necessarily a cognitive response that kicks in, but it is very often an emotional one. And so that's what that caters for there. So it's a model that describes change related behavior. And what it does for us is suggest strategies or actions that you as a leader might take to, um, to help people traverse those particular changes. So what I'll do is walk through the four rooms um, and explain them. Uh, first up, we've got contentment in the top left hand side. So this is the space where people are traveling really well. Um, they have their systems and processes in place that they need. They know where to resource things. Um, that's both human and uh, technological. Um, they have their networks in place. And so really, you know, picking orders have been sorted out. People are ticking over very well and doing the work well and um, uh, traveling well in their teams and with their stakeholders, generally speaking. And um, so if you like, we could put in there the, the emotions uh, that sort of sit there. And those might be, you know, feeling quite, quite happy with things, feeling calm, you know, things are traveling quite nicely. And then the emotion, or beg your pardon, then the change gets announced. Now, a change might be announced um, suddenly, or it might appear suddenly. So, for instance, if I get a positive result back from the doctor, you know, it's a sudden shock. And so what happens is that I fall through the trap door. Okay, so there's a trap door that I kind of fall through into the, into the room below. Um, but it might be, you know, one that is sl more slow and sort of dawns on me and builds up as a change process as the comms come out from the senior exec. So you can have a change process that is either slower, moving from the past to the future and goes over a longer period of time, or as you well know, you know, you might have one that, um, that is, is faster. So you get the slower and the faster change. So we're in the room of contentment, ticking over nicely. This change gets announced and we move into the room of denial. Now, the denial space is, again, remember we are now into the emotional zone across here. And in this space, of course, we react to it with initially some shock. So we've got, we've got the shock initially, and then it might shift into anger. You know, what sits behind that? 
there might be some uh, some deep rooted fear that sits there. You know, what about me? Am I going to become um, you know uh, irrelevant in this process? Will I will I be um, uh, put out? Will I lose my job? Um, it might rather be a case of sadness if it's not such a strong reaction, but there are a number of those kinds of emotions that are happening at this stage. Now to shift from the room of denial into confusion is um, an interesting one in that it is, and I'm going to draw a door through each of these four rooms. And this door here, I'm going to draw as a saloon door. And the reason for that is when we move from denial, which is this initial reaction to the, to the change, uh, and it's a protective behavior where we actually put up all the arguments to protect ourselves because we feel so unsafe. Uh, we slowly as time goes by, or maybe it might be fast, but as time goes by, we move into more of a tentative space of saying, hang on, let me try this out. Um, I realize the change is here to stay. I don't like it and I don't want it, but hang on, I'm realizing it's here to stay. And so I'm moving to this room of confusion where for me there is a level of bewilderment. Perhaps I'm bewildered. I might feel quite numbed by the change process. Uh, there is some disbelief. You know, how could this happen? Um, things were going so well, I didn't see it coming. Uh, but uh, here it is, and I'm not sure how to grapple with it. Um, Self-doubt is an interesting emotion as well that kind of responds, that comes out here as well. Um, you know, why has this happened? Uh, why are they, why am I being engaged in the way that I am? Um, and so moving, if you like, from the fear, it moves to self-doubt. So you can see the progression here in emotion. Um, it's still an emotional space, but there's, there's a shift. Now back to my swing doors. I drew the swing doors because people move from this denial into the confusion space and f get into the space which is really incredibly unsettling, right? It's, so you don't know which side's up, which side's down. You know the change is happening, uh, but you really don't know what to do about it. And so one might easily move back into the room of denial through the swing doors and go, no, I've had enough of this. This is rubbish. It's nonsense. Uh, we've tried this before, you know, etc. So we move back into that protecting space. If you're in the room of confusion, there's, a, there's, a, there's something to bear in mind here, and that is this notion of a zero point. So I've drawn a little spot there in the middle of the journey through the confusion room. And it's called the zero point because it's at that point that we let go the contentment that was. Yeah, so it's, I eventually get through my own kind of uh, maze of confusion to actually say, okay, the change is here, it's going to happen, um, and what was is past. It is definitely past. And at that point, I stop going through the swing doors and I can actually move on to the next room. Now, there's a point here that I want to make before we leave this emotional piece at the bottom. And possibly if there's only one thing you take away from this, from this clip, um, it's, it would be this one that I would hope you'd hold on to. And that's the notion of loss. It is absolutely paramount in change that as leaders, we need to be scanning for this notion of loss. Because it's, you know, the, the saying has been said, oh, people don't cope well with change. Well, we actually do. Uh, because we eventually get there, we, um, we see the benefits and so on, uh, and it can be communicated in ways that, that, we, that we realize that there are those benefits and opportunities. What none of us cope well with, and it's a truism, is loss. So what's gone is gone. Uh, and you know, very, the, the, the leading of people through change is, is very much like a grieving process. Um, so how do I notice how people are struggling with the loss and how might I respond to that one? So this notion of loss is, sits here very large. The other thing I want to say before we leave the emotional space <clears throat> is that um, some people might say, I've had this, I've had enough of this, and it's before the zero point, 
really, you know, this is just too much, I'm out of here. And so what you've got is the fire escape. So here you've got the fire escape that takes someone completely out. So that's another reaction that people have. And there's also the um, dungeon of doom, right, that sits underneath the building over here. And that dungeon of doom is a place where people dig in. Um, so if the reaction is that extreme and the sense of violation is that extreme and it happens for people who hold particular values really, really strongly or perhaps have had a previous experience that's been triggered by this, there are many reasons, then they'll move into this dungeon of doom. So they climb down the stepladder into the dungeon of doom um, and this is a place where there is, um, you know, the emotions there would be something to be violent, a sense of being violated, um, a deep sense of resentment, those kinds of emotions. Yep. All right, so moving from confusion to renewal, the door that we have there is a large oak door. And it is, it is so because it is a large door, it needs a lot of pushing. And to get from confusion into re renewal, uh, it takes some work to get there. And it takes tenacity. But what you'll start seeing there, and this is of course where, um, out, of our, out of our dismay and disbelief, we start seeing the sunshine. We start seeing that there's hope, that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and so we begin to start saying, oh, hang on, I might try that. Oh, there's the possibility of, of that. And so hope is one of the emotions that comes up um, initially. So there's a sense of possibility. Um, and as that grows, as the creativity is uh, kind of unleashes and people feel like they can begin to contribute, then you get the enthusiasm that begins to flow. All right, and so that's that's the notion of of this. Um, and so at this point, people are really excited. They could be on a real high, and then as that becomes the new normal, um, the whatever change process it was, then they would shift into back into the contentment space, um, and you know be kind of in there. Now, of course, as we know, there are multiple change processes in any organisation. So you could have the this happening in parallel, and you could have staff members um, sitting. In, in multiple rooms uh, across different change processes. But we'll talk more about that in, in the next video. Um, there's an opportunity now for you to reflect on um, a change process that you went through, that is, were recipient to. And um, I'd invite you to think about the emotions that you felt as you went through that change process, as you experienced it for yourself. And if you could uh, make some notes on, on a diagram like that, to flesh out the emotions that you felt. Try and add some new emotions here. I've just done a few. Um, what might those emotions have been? So to build a kind of an emotional scorecard, if you like, that uh, you might be looking out for as leader. All right, I'll see you again soon.